Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing another awesome math video. Um, in this math video, I'm going to talk about something um, that I was actually recently doing in one of my classes. And it's when you have a fraction as an exponent. So you've probably seen this before. And basically, you, you might have a fraction as an exponent. So let me just give you a very simple example. So you might have something like um, 8 to the 1 over 3. And you might be asked to sort of evaluate that, or you might be asked to write it as a radical or something like that. So there's a couple different rules that we can um, we can use when we're dealing with fractional exponents. So the first rule that we have is that if you have a number, let's call it a, to some fractional exponent that's 1 over n. So it could be like in our case 1 over 3, 1 over 2, um, 1 over 4, whatever it is. Then we can rewrite that as a radical so as a root basically with index n so that's called the index this guy right here and our radicand a so that's kind of a neat thing so one of the things that sometimes people don't realize is that an exponent of say one half is exactly the same as a square root and that's two um, so that's really one of the fractional exponent laws that you're probably responsible for. So let's just take, I'll just make up a couple of examples here. So let's just say you had, I don't know, um, let's say 16 to the 1 over 4. So if you were asked to evaluate that, one of the things you might do is just rewrite it as a radical. So it would be 4 as your um, index and 16 as your radicand. So your base becomes your radicand and your denominator becomes your index. So that's important to remember. So the bottom becomes the index. So basically you're asked for the fourth root of 16. So that's the same as, you know, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that would be 2. So there it is. That's one of our easy laws to remember. So I'm just going to erase this. And I'm going to write that law, rewrite that law over here in the corner so we can remember it. Um, a to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. Alright, so there's another couple laws that, of course, doesn't cover all our fractions. So there's another couple laws that will take care of that. So we might have something like, this time, 8 to the 2 over 3. So if you were trying to rewrite this guy as a radical, um, it's a little bit more complicated. So the way we can actually do that is use this law. So if I have something a to the n over, actually m over n, I'll rewrite that. a, let me fix that a, there we go. a to the m over n, then I can rewrite that guy just like this. So again, my bottom number is my index, so n, so the nth root of a, and then I can use brackets and that top number right there becomes my exponent so the top number is the exponent and the bottom number is the index so that becomes my exponent it's almost like as if you had something like this so if I had I can rewrite sort of this guy a little bit if I had 8 to the 1 half all to the 3 so that's kind of the way we visualize we're writing it. So we take the inside part here, because if I multiplied these two exponents, that would just give me, actually I got that backwards. That should be the two right there. Um, so if I multiplied these two guys together, I'd just get two over three. But of course I can rewrite this one using my rule that I learned over here, and then my exponent would just be two. So if I wanted to rewrite this guy, it would look like this. So let's see. 8 to the 2 over 3 is equal to, so the bottom number is my index, so 8, the cube root of 8, all to the 2. So there it is written as a radical. Now if I wanted to evaluate this, I know the cube root of 8 is 2, and that would be 2 squared, and that would be 4. So there's my, there's basically my second, um, 
my second ex fractional exponent law. So I'll rewrite this guy over here. Now there's another version of this law that I'm not particularly fond of, but it does have an application, I guess, sometimes, depending on the situation you're given. So if I got a to the m over n, that's the same as the nth root of a. The only difference is now I'm going to have an exponent of n on the m on the outside. So the other version of this law is we just change the location of the exponent. So if I have a to the m over n, I can rewrite that as n, the nth root of a, and this time instead of placing my exponent on the outside, I place it underneath the radicand on the number. So the reason why I don't really like this one is because if we were trying to evaluate something uh, mentally, so if we had something like, I don't know, Let's just use the exact same example, 8 to the 2 over 3. So if I was trying to do this one mentally and I wanted to rewrite it like this, so remember my bottom number is my index, so 8. And um, so the radicand will be 8, and then put my exponent 2, just right there. So instead of having the cube root of 8 first, now I have the 8 squared. So immediately we end up with a bigger cube root. So not that 64 is hard to deal with. It's actually kind of easy to deal with. I know the cube root of 64 is just 4. But you can see in certain situations you might actually have a really, really big number. So let me give you an example of that. Um, if we had something like, um, let's try 27 to the 2 over 3. So it's you know similar. I just changed the base. So that will be the same as 3. And I'll write it as the first way I did it. Squared, just like that. So 27, cube root of 27 is just 3 squared. And that's equal to 9. Now if I rewrite it via the other way, the second way, I would have it like this. So it would be um, cube root of 27 squared. So immediately I have to know what 27 squared is, which off the top of my head I have absolutely no idea what it is. So, um, but I can assume that in the end that equals 9. But you can see if you were on a mental math um, type of assessment where a non-calculator assessment and you had to do it, this way is way easier. But I will write my third rule as this guy. So it's really the same rule. It's just a slightly different spin on it. But again, certain times you might use the third one here, but I prefer, definitely prefer the second one. Alright guys, so that sort of takes care of how we deal with um, fractional exponents. Remember, fractional exponents, they're really just uh, radicals. So um, they're easy to deal with when we write them as radicals and you can deal with them that way or if you don't want if you don't want to deal with radicals you can write them as fractional exponents. All right guys, hope this video helps and I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.